Okay, friends, so we've got a problem we have to attack. We have to figure out if we need 0.8 milliliters of something, how many microliters is that? Now, this is, you can tell this is going to be a really, really, really small amount because that's a milliliter. That isn't even a whole milliliter. It's only 80% of one. So imagine, you know, imagine a little bit of that taken off. That's a little tiny amount of whatever you're pipetting out. I guess it's liquid. So it kind of makes sense that we're going to talk about this in terms of microliters. So we have to start with milliliters and end up with microliters. Okay, we're going to do this two different ways. The first way is a method I show my math students when we do this kind of math called dimensional analysis, which is a really fancy way of saying we're going to start with one measure and end up with another one. The second way is going to be just kind of a conversational moving the decimal way that works because this is a metric system and because this is base 10. I like both ways because in case you ever have to convert anything not in the metric system, the first way I'm going to show you will work across any uh, systems of measure, not just metric, also English and whatever else. The second way, because it's the metric system, we can actually speed up the process. So let's look at both ways now. So if we have to get from 0.8 milliliters to some number of microliters, what you want to do is you want to multiply this thing by a conversion fraction. And the conversion fraction wants to get rid of milliliters and replace it with microliters. Now this is going to seem a little bit weird, but watch this. If we put this over one to make it into a fraction because any any number or quantity can be placed over one we can then multiply that by a fraction that is equal to one but the numerator and denominator of the fraction are going to have these two units in them we want to get rid of this unit and end up with that unit. Now, this is where, this is a big chunk of my Math 98 and Math 105 courses. But if milliliters are in the numerator in this, we want it to be in the denominator down here. We'll see why in a second. And we want to end up with microliters, so we're going to put microliters up top, because technically speaking, this is going to be over one. Now, all you have to do is replace these blank spaces with the correct numbers. But we already know what those numbers are, right? We know what those numbers are from the previous videos. How are microliters related to milliliters? Well, milliliters are bigger than microliters. You have to get that kind of in your head first. One milliliter is 1,000 microliters. Once you have this conversion fraction, and you got to remember, since these two things are equal, this whole fraction is equal to 1. So multiplying this by 1 doesn't change its value. What it does do, though, is it allows you to divide off the milliliters. And now all you've got left is 0.8 times 1,000 microliters. And then you can use that metric stuff if you're multiplying 0.8 times 1,000. Earlier, when we talked about dividing by powers of 10, dividing by powers of 10, we moved the decimal point to the left because the numbers were getting smaller. We're now multiplying by a power of 10. It has the same movement of decimal, but now it's going to move to the right because they're getting larger. So if we start here with 0.8, we multiply by 10, it moves it over 1 to 8. One more moves it to 80. One more moves it to 8. Hundred. So this is going to be 800 microliters. This method will work regardless of your measurement system, whether it's metric, whether it's uh, uh, English, whatever system you're using. But because you're dealing with the metric system here, it might, this might be a little bit cumbersome, a little bit too heavy handed. Let's look at the exact same problem without having to go through all of this. Okay, friends, here's way number two of dealing with the conversion problem. Like, what is 0.8 milliliters in microliters? This is kind of the number line I learned 
years ago when I took chemistry class, the metric system number line. It's not quite like a number line like you're used to in mathematics. Instead, it's kind of an equivalence chart. So if you can put any number somewhere on this line, you can then move to the right or left if necessary. But since this is microbiology, we're going to be moving that way and figure out how many of different volumes you need to make up that one. Let's make up an example here for starters. If you have one liter, one liter, I've drunk most of this while recording these videos, <laughs> then how many milliliters is that? Well, we know how many milliliters it is. It's a thousand because we talked about that in the first video. How do you get to a thousand though? Well, it takes one liter to equal the same as 10, I believe these are called deciliters, probably like DL, which is the same as 100 centiliters. God, I hope I'm using the right letters there. It doesn't matter because you're not using them anyway, but they are there. There are stops in between one and a thousand. Once you hit milliliter, it's a thousand milliliters. So notice as you move from left to right, you're adding zeros. Each stop adds another zero. You can keep going. I'm not even going to pretend to know what these two are called, but it doesn't matter. If you were to stop at them, you'd add another zero there to get 10,000. And then you'd add another zero here to hit 100,000. And you'd add another zero at microliters to get to a million. So if you're moving from left to right on this number line, you simply keep adding a zero with every move to the right. Why adding a zero? Because you're multiplying by 10 going that way. So the problem we had to do did not start with one liter. As a matter of fact, it started over here at 0.8 milliliters. If we move that way one to whatever this measurement is called, it would be eight milliliters, excuse me, whatever it's called liters. Then you move another one, it would be 80, whatever those are called liters. And you move once more, 800 microliters. If you could envision kind of this in your head, this is a much simpler way of doing it than the multiplication of fractions I showed you in the previous one. Although, nonetheless, the multiplication of fractions is always going to work too. So I'm going to let you choose which one you want to use. Let's look at another one. Okay, just like last time, I'm going to do it first using the multiplication of the equivalent fractions and then the second method we'll use the sliding scale of the, uh, of the metric system number line. So we're starting this time with microliters. We want to end up with milliliters. Okay. Same process. I'm going to make both of these things into fractions just because it's going to make life easy to visualize. I now need the conversion fraction. Well, the nice thing about it is the conversion fraction I'm going to use is going to have the same numbers and units as we did before. However, this time I want to get rid of microliters, which means I want microliters down here and I want to keep milliliters so milliliters goes up top. That way we're going to be able to divide off the microliters this time. Then all you got to do is get the correct one and a thousand in the right place. So you got to remember that a milliliter, it takes one milliliter to equal a thousand microliters. I'm going to get my divide off chalk. <laughs> divide, divide. And now this might seem kind of familiar because we're going to start with 750 and divide by 1,000. So we're going back to that move the decimal to the left idea. 750 divided by 1,000 is going to give you 0.75 milliliters. But again, in case this is seeming a little bit heavy-handed, let's take a look once again at using the, uh, the number line of the metric system equivalences. Okay, so now we have 750 microliters. That's here. We need to figure this out in milliliters. Now, when we move from liters that way, or 
four milliliters that way. When we move to the right, the numbers were getting larger. That should make some intuitive sense. The measures themselves are getting smaller, which means it takes more of them to make up a given volume. Now we're going to be moving to the left, which means these measures are going to be getting larger compared to the ones over here. That means the numbers are going to be getting smaller because it takes fewer of them to make up the same volume. So if we start with 750 microliters, taking one step this way, we're going to have to move to 75 whatever liters. Moving one more step is going to be 7.5 whatever liters. Moving one more step is going to be 0.75 or three quarters of a milliliter. Again, a very small amount. Now, what's so cool about this is you can keep going if you wanted to. I don't think you're ever going to have to. But with this sliding scale, you can go as far as you want. That would be 0.075 centiliters or 0.0075 deciliters or 0.0075 liters or 0.0000075 kiloliters. Is that even a thing? Maybe that's a thing. It's a thousand liters, I guess. So you could always do a problem like this via multiplication, like we saw. But you could also use the sliding scale metric system to speed up the process as well.